Uh, hello everyone, welcome back. Um, this is a continuation on the uh, the MIG uh, 170. As you know from last time, um, that the receptacle on this doesn't uh, doesn't quite match with with this here. As you can see, this is uh, the plug here, and this is the plug on your generator. Uh, at least on on this particular model here, the 3200 uh, continuous uh, 4000 watt max. And so you got all these outlets here, and uh, you know you got your 120, 120, 120, 120. And then you have this here, which is uh, 120 slash 240, and that's a little confusing for me at first, but uh, kind of kind of figured it out. But it turns out there's there's not too many adapters uh, out there that you could just buy off the shelf and just just do this um, with your welder. Um, so what I had to do was, you know, I, I had to make one. So this is the the plug here. And it says here uh, 30 amp, um, 125, uh, 250 volt, and this is the plug that fits in here. And and, it, and this is kind of the code for it. It's lock 1430P. Uh, don't know exactly. I know the L means lock. I don't know what the 14 is, but maybe the type of plug it is, um, or type of shape. And then the 30 meaning uh, the 30 amps here, and then P as in plug, seems like. So, and then this is a 12 gauge, 12 gauge wire. Um, you know, in the manual, I think it recommends uh, if you're going to use an extension, use 10 gauge. But this is just so short; it's only about three, three and a half feet. Um, so I had to plug this in. And it's kind of weird how it's set up. It's there's uh, the ground, so the green wire, somewhere around here. Yeah, there it is. You see the green wire, and the green goes to the green screw, which is the ground. And then you get this uh, little pink or pink and white and black. So um, and on these, on the back here, uh, when you when you hook them up, there's the ground that you just connect to the ground, which is the green, uh, the green wire, and then there's the X. There's an X. There's a W, and there's a a Y, I believe. And so um, I'm not an electrician, but it just made sense that maybe W means white. X is probably the hot or the black wire, and the Y would be this third wire that we got here. So I just connected that way, and I guess I probably lucked out. But the, that was the easy part. The hard part was, okay, I got four wires here, and this is the the receptacle to the uh, the welder. Uh, and there's only three connections, as you can see: uh, the ground, the hot, and another hot or or the common um, so I didn't know at the time and uh, what I did was I put the white wire in here and plugged up this this wire right here but basically these are just two hot wires and this is the common um, so this being the main hot wire and the secondary hot wire and so um, at the time I didn't know and uh, I put the white wire in here plugged it in and you know the fan turned on it turned on but the fan was going and everything but it wouldn't it wouldn't do anything beyond that I, I could see the fan rolling in here and it wouldn't go and so um, guess what I did um, you know we I get this free multimeter here and basically I turned it up here I don't know if you can see that here AC voltage 750 200 so I always set it on the higher so it doesn't you know fry up uh, my free uh, multimeter and then let me see if I can do this in a way that kind of shows you guys a little bit better there we go so basically I just uh, from that point on the sun's coming out I 
touched it here and with this white wire being in here I only got a reading of uh, 125, 125 volts. And I was like well that's not gonna work. Um, I must be doing something wrong and so um, I, I figured this might be another hot wire so if I put this hot wire in here where this would be um, maybe maybe it would be uh, another 120 and I would get two, 250 or 240 and so I put this in cap this off this is the ground which is kind of simple just stays there and then test it again on the voltage and once you know it uh, of course it's zero now it's not on but it came out to 225 250 volts so I was like okay wow it worked and this plug is a um, re it's a receptacle it's a 6 dash 50 amp there it is if you can see that uh, NEMA 6 dash 50 and that's well, that's just the way it is. Uh, that's what works with it. So, um, turns out they don't make adapters readily available for a welding situation. Um, so this is what I had to basically uh, had to buy the receptacle here, um, buy that plug there, uh, buy the uh, four wire. This is four wire, two hots, uh, a common, and a ground. Uh, 12 gauge stranded wire, but it, you know, I think 12 gauge work and uh, Basically You know you just have to make it in order to make it work because they don't it's not something that's just done Because I was pulling my hair out uh, trying to find something So here you go. I plugged it in <sighs> Locked it up. There you go Locked it and then this just uh, simply just uh, plugs in. There we go. Move that multimeter away. So there it is. It's, it's all plugged in, turned off, and uh, of course the reason I was doing this was because uh, I was trying to help a neighborhood uh, kid weld his. Uh, little go-kart little motor on it uh, weld his uh, frame back together uh, looks like he was jumping some curbs and so uh, broke uh, several places on the frame um, so anyways I already did that for him so I just uh, kinda wanna do this on the follow-up uh, uh, to kinda show you that uh, this setup can work if you have one of these generators um, I got one just for a backup uh, to a power situation, um, but uh, you know I, I was planning on doing a you know eventually sub panel to my garage here, but I haven't done that yet because copper is so damn expensive. So this is just a, another uh, alternative here, where I'm taking my my generator and using the two uh, 240 volt plug, wiring it the plug and the receptacle to be 240 of course because you can also set it up to be 120 as well um, and then I'm going to test out and I already, I already know it works because I've already done it so I'm just kind of following up on it for you guys here and I'm kind of sure you're some of you might have been curious to see if it does work so okay and so I already uh, measured the, the thickness, uh, made the settings here. Um, so let me just get my uh, welding helmet here.
Um, uh, well, hopefully I, you saw all that. Um, I'll, I'll take you out and, and kind of show you. I, I noticed right off the bat, uh, compared to the uh, 90 amp, this 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 thing rocks. It uh, with a little bit more the power that it has, it just uh, it just makes the weld uh, go by so much faster um, because uh, when I had the 90 amp this this is what I did here with the 170 um, to make the same weld with the 90 amp it would have taken me longer uh, I would have had to hold it there and just slowly go uh, with the 170 I just if I kept it there any longer it would uh, literally burn through and then what I did to kind of kind of show how strong it is is uh, burned a hole right through it so uh, I just went ahead and turned it on to max power 2 uh, right now it was set it was set on minimum on 2 with a speed of uh, speed of uh, 2 and then what I did is I put it on max 2 and then I increased it to 4 and you could hear the generator uh, going and there you go, you saw it burn right through. I don't know how bright the camera would have been showing, but that's, and it burned right through real quick. Of course, it, it's not that thick. It's, um, I measured several places with the, uh, the digital caliper, and uh, it ranged from 1.5 millimeters to 1.36, depending where I was and how much, uh, um, I guess, debris was here. But the smallest measurement I got was 1.37 uh, millimeters. The biggest was uh, um, 1.58. And again, this you know it, it's curving a little bit as you can see from from my little test test welds here. So, um, but I was just following the guidelines um, on here. On the uh, on the flux core side and then it was in between these two these two settings um, so I put it on to actually four in the beginning and uh, man uh, if I moved that the welder really fast over I had, to, I had to move the welder really fast over it to keep up with the bead or it would have burned a hole so I turned it actually down to two so I could just go a little bit slower um, three might have been the right speed, but man, the, the power on this is awesome. Um, if, if you if you have a 90 um, and, and it's a little too slow for you or you, or you had fun uh, practicing with it um, and, you, and you feel a little need to do a little bit more, uh, 170, going, going to 170 or if you want, you can jump up to the 180. Um, wouldn't be a bad option and uh, unfortunately I know a lot of you don't have uh, uh, 240 outlets but uh, if you have a generator um, and most of these generators have uh, a 20 amp 240 uh, just do what I did get the uh, plug a cord and a plug so like I said this is a, a L 1430p so lock 1430 amp plug to a 6 uh, 50 amp receptacle here and this is the only one I could find here uh, but the way it's hooked up here is uh, as you, you take your two hot wires the black and this pinkish reddish one and this is your common you can cap that off or plug that off here and then your ground and these two are 120 120 giving you 240 or 250 so it says um, and if you have a digital multimeter go ahead and test it you can you can just touch it on the back here and then uh, you'll you'll see that it's giving you uh, 240 or 250 uh, confirm it you know you can touch these two the ground and the, one of the hots here that would be 125 you do the same over here, it'd be 125, and then, so, uh, that's how you would wire it, and this just be uncapped. Uh, you can make it another 120 if you
you wanted to, um, just take out one of one of the uh, hot the second hot wire and put in your common wire in there, and that'll give you 120, uh, 125 actually. And so there you go. Um, this was really uh, not that expensive. Um, I know it's you go to the big box stores and you buy these outlets. You know they they probably charge you a lot more than if you went to some specialty uh, electrical uh, supply hardware store. But uh, it was. I would say about $25 for this setup here. Um, not too bad considering, you know, the other option is to go ahead and uh, put a sub panel in and wire out uh, your garage, which um, I would say about 100 feet of uh, number eight wire. Um, man, you're looking at a, probably like $300. So um, this is just a. You know, just temporary until I, I can wire everything, but it, I can do it now. Um, so, anyways, I hope this was uh, helpful for you guys. If if you're, I know these go on sale a lot, and a lot of people probably have these. Every time I go in there, I always see somebody walking out with one of these generators. Um, really inexpensive, or if you don't have to have this generator, you could have any generator. Um, but if you have a welder. Um, and you want to be a little bit mobile um, or you want to jump up to a 240 um, yeah this this could be a good way uh, to do it um, and it's mobile so you can you can do this anywhere so this this could be a, an option for uh, anybody out there so anyways uh, you know hopefully this this helps uh, if you have any uh, comments please make a comment uh, feel free to uh, subscribe also, feel free to make any um, video responses here. So thank you very much, and uh, stay tuned for the next episode. Bye.